Hey everyone, this is my video about installing a trailer hitch receiver on my Subaru Forester 2022 uh, Wilderness Edition. Just a disclaimer, not a mechanic, no experience on this sort of thing. Um, and I didn't see any other YouTube videos out there about this topic, so I thought I would go over it and um, see if we can make this work. So here's fingers crossed. So a little bit of an overview of some of the preparation for this job. Um, there are directions I found online. I'll try to leave a link to that. It gives you information about what's in the kit and the tools you will require. I did have to um, purchase some of these tools for this project. Um, we'll go over a few of these things like over here, torque wrench. It's because you do have to specifically set up the pressure for these bolts. Um, some socket extenders and some deep sockets for specific sizes that are specified once again in those instructions. Um, some trimming tools for the little piece that will go around on the bumper. You do have to make a cut, so we will be taking this whole bumper off and adding a little trim component around that, which you also have to trim up um, to fit some screwdrivers, some other sockets, and then Dremel cutting pieces. And then I've also got um, a kit of the little plastic um, pegs or um, the remover pieces for the little clips, the plastic clips on the bumper. So I got a set online. So we'll see if I can successfully remove some of these clips because there are a ton of clips on this project. The last piece is obviously the kit. I just picked this up from my dealership today. I tried to order one online, but was having issues getting it in stock. So I went and picked it up and it ended up being about the same price as what I was gonna order online with a discount. Um, so I'm gonna be opening this up and seeing to make sure it has everything we need. like this is the wire harness that we do have to connect um, for the trailer uh, wiring. This is receiver cover and bolt bag. So the little cover branded and the bolts and there's that little trim component around the cut I mentioned earlier. And then here is the actual receiver. Pretty heavy, heavy duty. And now these go into the insert from what I saw in the instructions on where the current crash bar is. All right, we're just gonna be stepping through these instructions. It looks like the first step is removing the spare tire and everything in the back here. I've got a couple cover pieces, so I'll be removing those. Um, and just getting that all of the way because we do have to access the back side of the bumper for the removal. Just a little heads up on these um, foam inserts in the back. There's these little pins uh, that you have to remove. I did use one of my tools from that kit. I talked about the uh, these right here to remove them. They do pop out, they make a scary sound, but none of them are broken. So um, that's all there is to it. They just push in and plug into these plastic receivers down here. All right, last step is to remove the rear tailgate trim. Um, looks like it's saying to use those clip removers like I have. Hopefully they're not too tricky.
So first difference I've encountered here, if you look in the instructions, it says to remove two push pin fasteners to remove the rear inside trunk panel and to remove the rear trim. Um, on the Wilderness 22 here, I had these brackets that were screwing in here and appear to have been connected. And I'm not seeing inside trim panels, so a little different. It was a 12 millimeter socket to remove these. There's one on either side. So it turns out there were some clips on the bumper trim, interior bumper trim, but they're not accessible from the top. You just have to get at them and just kind of peel this up. Um, I could kind of reach under there with my pry tool from the clip remover kit. All right, it looks like the next step is to remove the tail light covers. Um, it says it's a Phillips head screwdriver and a 10 millimeter socket. So a little head us up on those um, light connections for the rear tail lights. Um, it says just a screwdriver or a row of screws, but they're actually um, screw based clips. So I did have to use my little pry tool along with a Phillips head screwdriver. So I was able to get the clips out on the lights. Now I got to figure out how to get the actual trim piece off. It seems to be tucked in into the light. Um, so I'll have to see if there's any information I can find on that. A little plastic pry bar getting under the lip where it's tucked in under the actual light edge um, and get all the way down along it seemed to do the trick. So the next step was to actually uh, disconnect those lights and the uh, power connections to those lights. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and try to disconnect the battery just to make sure there's no risk of electric shock. All right, returning to the tail light removal, you use that 10 millimeter socket and then there's actually a Phillips head connector. So I just broke it loose with the 10 millimeter and then use that Phillips head to remove it. Um, All right, it looks like the next step is to remove the whole rear bumper fascia, basically the whole plastic bumper piece. Um, it looks like we have some pin fasteners and yep, I think that's what it is. Uh, it sounds like the first ones to remove are actually in the wheel well, the first uh, fasteners. Okay, it turned out there was a pinch point on the RAD uh, connection. It was just on the side versus the fat side versus the thin side on the light. Okay, the next step is to use a 14 millimeter deep socket to remove the two bolts and one nut from each side of the bumper beam. Looks like we discard those. We're gonna be using the new ones from the kit. And then we remove the bumper beam and apply some paint to the show in areas. I'll see if I have something for that. Yep. So I got the rear crash bar off. I did try to tie it up, that ended up being a mistake. There are some nuts um, in two of the spots, so there's still bolts protruding from the frame. Um, and those would have held it up. I actually bumped it off when I was trying to untie my rope. So I don't suggest that, just um, take everything off and 
let it sit on the bolts as long as you're in a flat uh, location. Okay, I did have some flat black Rust-Oleum. So I just used that to touch up around those port points just to help with rust prevention. All right, the next step is we got to disconnect the muffler um, and remove the heat shield, it looks like. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It's all underneath the car. Um, looks like it says two bolts, um, two locking nuts, and some hangers. So hopefully not too bad. Okay, I got the uh, muffler and the heat shield off. The muffler was a little tricky. Those rubber hangers were actually the hard part. Uh, I had to get some gloves and work, work them off. Um, the nice thing was the actual exhaust connection for the muffler was 14 millimeter, the same as the bash bar on the back. Um, so I was able to use that same deep socket there. Uh, it looks like the next step is to remove some rubber grommets from inside of the side frame under there where we just remove those components. Okay, the instructions weren't very clear about those rubber grommets. They talk about it for the side on the heat shield, uh, but not on the driver's side of the vehicle. I went ahead and removed those because I believe we're going to need them for the mounting brackets that go into those two holes we painted around. Okay, the next step is installing those bracket assemblies into those openings. Um, left hand side. So yeah, it looks like it'll cup the actual uh, receiver piece to fit into it. All right, we'll give it a try. Okay, so I got those uh, finger bolted, finger tightened on. Um, you're supposed to do that before you set in the actual main hitch member part. Um, and then it, I bet that's when you'll um, bolt that in by hand and then um, get it down to torque spec afterwards. Okay, I did a little more paint touch up now that I can see where it's connecting and also got those hand tightened as best as I can. Um, looking at the next set of instructions here, we have the torque specifications. So it looks like I'm supposed to torque these all down to 78 pound feet of torque. Um, yeah, all the connections. Okay, so I got it all torqued down. I did have to drop this um, plastic piece. It's another 10 millimeter bolt, two bolts that I used just to loosen it so I could drop it to fit the torque wrench in. Um, they're also the Phillips head bolt connector type. Um, everything's torqued up to the 78 pound feet of torque. All right, so the next part is the scary part. This is where we have to cut the bumper fascia, the plastic component that covers your bumper, um, and then install the trim. There are different um, templates that came with the instructions. 
So I have to cut this out. Be sure to measure your square to make sure you're one inch by one inch or else um, your measurements could be incorrect. And it gives you information on how to set it up. So I'm gonna be working on that now. Okay, so what I did here was I um, did a rough layout after cutting it out, put some tape down where I thought the cut lines would be, um, double tape this down in the middle where it is, and then drew along the cut edge. That way it'll be easy to see on the tape, and the tape also helps prevent kind of ripping in materials often. So hopefully this will help get a nice clean cut. Okay, next step appears to be the wiring harness and finding the clip on the inside of the vehicle. Looks like it's over here on this side. They say it's taped in. Yep, let's just disconnect that. Okay, so I got that connector out. It says, make the trail harness connector H, the vehicle connector and wrap with foam tape K. I assume that's the foam tape that's already here. It's just noise dampening or something. No. I'm not supposed to remove that. Maybe it's just, just like that. So another uh, little deficit in the instructions. Um, it says to remove the rubber grommet plug in the bottom. There are two. So I don't know exactly which one. And then also trying to determine where these pieces are supposed to mount is a little tricky. So trying to figure that out as well. Okay, after a little more looking at the instructions here, I ended up going with this approach. You can see the wiring harness components and the fuse are over there in the corner. Wrapped this connector with that little bit of foam tape that was in the kit. Um, yeah, I went with this plug. I just tested and the full size spare does fit in fine, so I think we're good. Okay, the external harness components are attached. There's a clamshell bracket um, that gets installed right here. The only real trick to that is there's a loop for the cover, and that has a specific spot to go through. Then they give you some mounting setup and some zip ties to connect the wire up here to keep it up high. Okay, looks like we're at the reinstall phase, so I'm gonna see how this goes. All right, so some final thoughts. There's the install. It looks pretty good. I think the cut's fairly even. Um, I think that was one of the hard parts. The hangers were the other hard part on the muffler. Um, it did take most of the afternoon for me. The shop was going to say it was two hours um, for the install. They were going to charge like 400 bucks. So that's the takeaway there. Um, looks like everything's working correctly. Don't check engine lights, throw it in reverse, get everything break off. Let's see. Reverse sensor 
things are working. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So it looks like we're all hooked up correctly. Um, I think I think it's doable for most people. If you have some technical ability, some familiarity with tools, like I said, it did take me probably four hours, so probably twice what the shop claims. Um, so yeah, if you're up for it, I think it's doable. Thanks.